Good morning, traders. I'm Dennis Dick. And I'm Joel Alconin. Welcome to Pre-Market Info. Wells Fargo just reported earnings. They beat by a couple of cents, had a quick lift, and then started selling off. And it's trading down right now. American Express, Info Systems, both report earnings. American Express actually surprised us as they reported early. Chevron announced a little bit of guidance there for the fourth quarter coming up, and it looks pretty good. And Best Buy announces flat sales, but the stock is rallying. I guess that's what happens, Joel, when I have all bad news all the time, and then he announces flat sales, stock gets a lift. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, you know, this market is so finicky. You know, it uh, they like good news. You know, they hate bad news. They just are all over the place. It's hard to interpret what, what the actions are going to be. But here we are with Wells Fargo. And, wow, it was a crazy pre-market. Uh, when the number came out, I actually had that number. 36 bucks is what I was thinking. I sold it just on the number when it went up to 35.99. And, of course, being the scalper that I am, 10 seconds later, I cover a 35.70. Should have held because it's now down to 35.03. <laughs> well, you probably didn't like taking that heat. <laughs> that heat. I took zero heat, didn't I? What was the high? Well, no, I went to take 36. Oh, I, I took a penny of heat. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I was looking. I'm going to post the numbers there in a little bit. But I was looking at the chart there to prepare those numbers. And those two highs back from October 8th and October 9th were sticking out like a sore thumb, 35.94 and 35.95. You got to figure there's some institutional size. It's 36. Well, so uh, at 36 as well. So good job there, Dennis. Uh, coming back on the downside, we're trading at a dangerous level here. We are trading at yesterday's low, which is 34.89. Uh, we do have some other levels under that. We will post them later on. 34.66 and 34.45 is a huge number on the downside. American Express surprised us last night, came out with earnings early. Stock initially actually started selling off, or actually rallied. They reported a dollar oh nine versus a dollar six. announced that they were cutting 5,400 jobs. It actually did initially sell off. Then it spiked all the way up. Joel will go find that after hours high for you. And now it's selling off here in the pre-market. Yeah, they were due to report in a little bit, but because of uh, the restructuring, they came out and did it anyways. Uh, you got a top here at 61.98. After you hit that level, you sold all the way off uh, to the 59.95 level, currently trading above that level. Let's just use that as a key number because you had a double bottom for Wednesday and Thursday at 60.09 and 60.15. Uh, got it close to the end of that area, a little bit lower in the pre-market. I like this stock as long as it holds 60 bucks. I think below 60 in a market sell-off, um, you could easily see 59.50 in that issue. Info Systems INFY reported earnings as well. Stock trading significantly higher here. It's an ADR, so obviously trading overseas as well. In the pre-market, it's up at 50.55 right now. They reported 76 cents against estimates of 72, increased the guidance. So lots of good news from Infosys, but. Here it is trading uh, up over a key level in the pre-market. I look at that $50, and I think that level is just huge. It's trading 50.53 right now, and 51 is absolutely enormous too. See big institutional selling pressure up there in that level. So you got to think I mean, it's going to be maybe a, a high here sometime and maybe a little bit of a sell-off maybe coming. Uh, yeah, you had 49.99 is the high on October 4th. Uh, we have exceeded that in the pre-market, making a high at 50.85 in the pre-market. I uh, don't notice. Just noticed. Uh, I was looking at the stock a little bit ago, and it only traded 10,000 shares, and now it's, it's trading trade close. Some stock now. Yeah, it's trying to save some stock. Uh, if you're going to take a stab at this thing, uh, you know, the $51 level would be good. Uh, coming back on the downside after they clear out the sellers on the book and as well as people caught short this stock, comes back below 50 bucks, and uh, I wouldn't want to be long with a Canadian dollar. Chevron, 
knocking the Canadians there. Chevron <laughs> uh, increased their guidance. Trading up at 111.38 here in the pre-market. Closed at 110.47. Here's a stock that actually looking pretty decent on the chart. It continues to rally. Yeah, it's multiple highs up here in this whole 111 area. 111.11 yeah. was the high on the 19th of December. And then you had a high at 110.92 on the 3rd of January. We are trading above there right now, so it looks like it's going to break out. I probably go back into the October highs and start to look in the 111.94 area for your next level of resistance. Yeah, actually, I got a level sticking out here at me. Uh, let me make sure I didn't make it up. Uh, 111.69 was the high on November 1st. Uh, so I would take it hot and look at that level in the pre-market. Uh, pre-market high, 111.38. Uh, it's not sure right if now. Yeah, I don't think I'd be wanting to buy this thing off the hop. Uh, what I noticed about Chevron um, over the last couple days uh, have had a, less than a point range for the last four days, which is very, very unusual on this stock. So although it's been going up, people have been letting go of stock. It just hasn't been running. Uh, if you've been holding on for a while, I like this 111.69 level. Coming back on the downside, you will find support at yesterday's high at 110.76. Goldman Sachs has uh, got a, quite a few uh, talking here a bit of this morning. Ford is the first stock. They're adding that to their conviction buy list. Also, so what does that mean? These are going to have convicts buy the stock? <laughs> I don't know. I don't think it means that. It means it looks like it's going to be a good buy, they're saying, going forward, obviously. The conviction buy list, so it sounds big anyways. Stock was trading over 14 this morning, trading 1396 now. was also announced they're going to add 2,200 white-collar jobs, so hiring some uh, mid-management there, Joel. So they're thinking good things of Ford still. Yeah, it's been on a heck of a run. Uh, we got over that $14 level in the pre-market, uh, making a pre-market high at 1414 so we'll keep an eye on that level. Uh, probably some stock lurking around in the book at 14 I think so. so. Yeah, so we'll see what happens between there. Uh, yesterday's high, 1394 uh, Right where we're trading now, uh, that is very minor support. Uh, below that, probably fall down to the close at 1383 They're downgrading General Mills GIS to a sell here this morning. That's Goldman Sachs downgrading them. Woo! Stocks only trade 600 shares, is offered right now at 4110 Uh Has traded 500 shares at 4110 So it looks like GIS is going to be low. Uh, or open down here this morning, obviously, on the downgrade. But this is stock. It's a lower beta stock. It's not. I don't think it's going to fall out of bed and fall like a buck and a half or something like that. You had a couple of lows in the 41 area. But if it does go through 41, it does start to open up a bit. Yeah, exactly. Uh, three lows, uh, 41 even to 41.15 uh, uh, are the last three lows in the stock. Uh, below that, you do have some open real estate to 40.76, as well as a gap to fill down to 40.46. Uh, coming back on the upside now that we're trading down 50 cents, uh, maybe if you can catch uh, some sleepy buyers off the open uh, around the close at uh, 41.60, 41.50, uh, might be something to look at in the short side. Research in motion getting downgraded at BMO Capital, one of your big Canadian brokerage houses. Stocks trading down 30 cents on that downgrade. Man, that $12 level, that's starting to look real toppy now. Obviously, it's coming back down towards the bottom end of this range. We've had a couple lows in the 1140, 1144 area. I think that's where it might be heading today, but starting to look toppy here on Research in Motion. Yeah, looking at the, uh, at the pre-market activity here in rim uh, you've made a low at 1150 uh, that will act as uh, support in the stock had a double bottom uh, at the beginning of the year the third and the fourth at 1140 and 1144 so we'll keep an eye on, on those levels uh, below that it opens up uh, you're right Dennis down to the $11 level and even slightly below it uh, major support doesn't come in into the rimster until uh, the Double bottom, 10.59 and 10.66. We talked about Best Buy briefly at the top of the show, but let's go back into it a little more detail here again. They came out with their holiday sales. They were flat over the holiday season. 
And the stock initially just kind of hanging out, but is rallying now on that on pretty decent volume, 589,000 shares. It's trading Ooh. up 60 cents at 12.80. Stock is starting to look a little bit better. Here's one of those dogs. A lot of dogs have been barking. We've been talking about that, meaning that a lot of your dogs in the last two months have been rallying. Best Buy really hasn't participated that much, but here it is this morning, and it looks like it's trying to play catch up. I know you were trying to play that for a swing trade. A couple times uh, I played it. I didn't have it on this last one, and I <laughs> wish I would have bought it two days ago when it got down to 11.38. I even looked at it. You had that 11.20 reference point, 11.38, 11.40, 11.50. It was kind of a low-risk buy as long as you obviously uh, got out if it went below 11.20. Well, and here I, it is. Uh, and it's, the most you could lose if you buy it 11.38, the most you could buy it, you could lose is 11.38. Oh, that's true, too. I guess they come up with after-hours news a lot of times, and they could ding you on that, too. But I was playing it more like because a lot of the other weaker stocks the stocks that have been weak the dogs had been rallying the last couple of months so i liked it for that reason i also like you know that little wild card that schultz could throw another bit yeah. in there obviously so there was a few reasons to actually maybe think about playing this from the long side and here you are here's a stock that really didn't announce great news but it didn't announce bad news and when stocks start going up just when you know the news is eh, it's not bad that's just telling you that you know kind of a lot of people are either short this thing or maybe there is a temporary bottom in so here's Here's the stock. It's up 12.85. I'm a buyer on this on pullbacks. I don't know if I want to buy it when it's up 65 cents here this morning, though. Yeah, it snuck over 13 in the pre-market. 13.05, currently trading at 12.85. Boy, you had a, just a host of highs at the 12.21, 12.22 area. Out of there. Interestingly, it broke through a, yesterday near the close. Made a 12.32 high, 12.21 uh, close. If you're looking to buy this on a pullback, uh, that you know it's quite a ways away from here, but that will now act as uh, major support. Uh, it seems like the last few times the stock's gapped up in the pre-market. You know, they've just beat it back down like a, a redheaded stepchild. But uh, maybe we'll get some follow-through today. I think you might. I think it might uh, continue up here a little bit. Usually you do get some type of a pullback, and that's maybe would be your opportunity. If you pull back in the 1250, 1260 area, maybe it gives you a little opportunity. Uh, what do you think of Apple here? Because stock is trading down again, and this is, like I've been saying, a hard one to figure out lately. It's definitely finding support down in the 515 area. You can see yesterday got down there again and rallied right off at 10 points. I mean, we've been down here this 515, 516 area three, four times, rallied off it every single time. It's pulling back here again today, down 3 bucks. Is it going to continue to uh, keep bouncing off that 515, 516? Wow, three out of four lows in the 515 handle. Where have you? Yeah, that is very, very unusual for the Apple's uh, for Apple stock. Uh, boy, I tell you, as long as it stays above 515, I, I would be. I, you know, you, you have to stay bullish here. Ton of support in that stock. Uh, gets below 515. I think things really open up down to the, the 509 level. Uh, coming back on the upside, uh, you know, you're starting to just get a bunch of closes here, uh, 527, 523.90, 525.31, 52351. Let's just call all that whole level 525. Uh, if we can get back and, you know, hold 525, uh, I expect this stock uh, to rally. Facebook gave back a little bit of its rally there yesterday. It obviously had taken out the 30 well, actually, it continued to rally. Actually, it was early, and it took out 30, and then just continued to rally 31.30. It's giving back 10 cents this morning, 31.20. But, man, the stock just keeps on marching. Yeah, I, what do you think the mystery I know I asked you about this uh, earlier in the week, but uh, I've seen, uh, I read a few articles about it, and uh, I might, I, I think I have an idea. I'm not, I'm not going to reveal it now. I'm going to run it by you and see if it's worth a blog, but I, I think I know what they're going to do. What do you think they're going to do? Right? I can't you say. You don't want to say. It's a mystery nope. still. Because I'm going to ask you, and if you say it's a stupid idea. Because <laughs> so far, my daughter said it was a stupid idea, and my wife said it was a stupid idea. So I'm going to so... tell everybody and hang yourself here on the show. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. No, that stock's been on a run. I mean, if you know, if you want to just protect some uh, you know, some profits in that from the, the, the big run up, uh, I'd be looking at uh, yesterday's low, 3028. I mean, you got to let it run it. You know, when it gets on a, a march like this, boy, it's been higher for several days, kind of straight up from uh, 28. But uh, don't try and pick a top on the upside. Let it come back and take you out. Uh, the next major resistance level is really not up until uh, 3248. So if we can get through yesterday's high, 
31.45. Sure, it's not going to go straight to 32.58, but that's our next level. Microsoft did hold the bottom of that channel yeah. there yesterday. We keep talking about it. Um, if you look at yesterday, the low was 26.29. Telling you, there's just support down here in this 26.26, 26.20 area. So as long as that holds, I guess you can continue to play this channel. But what an interesting day for Microsoft. It opened kind of flat on the downgrade, rallied all the way up hard, and then completely sold everything off, got down to the support that we had talked about, and then bounced 20 cents off that support. Yeah, I think they tried to ram that Morgan downgrade uh, down their throat. Uh, the just, yeah, yeah. Just interestingly, um, that stock traded huge volume yesterday. Uh, traded 71 million shares after wow. averaging, yeah, 40. So you know, maybe you know, maybe some longs just you know threw in the towel, puked their guts all over the place, and uh, you know, we got all the weak money out. Still using that that 26, 26 is uh, major support. And, uh, you know, low-risk buy down here. If it holds there, it still has a chance to recover. I'm just thinking, I'd like to wait. I know they think they announce earnings on the 23rd or whatever. I would love to see it stay down, you know, in this level. Maybe take some shot on some cheap calls or something and see if you get a pop out of it. I mean, it's, I mean support is support is support. What do you think of this overall market? We keep continuing to drift up. We're up a buck here this morning at 14.68. Obviously took out the major resistance of 14.62, but still just hanging out. Are we going to start breaking out here again and have a big Friday? Yeah, 14 Fourteen seventy and a quarter was yesterday's high. Uh, we exceeded that in the pre-market by only a point and a quarter. So there you go. You have a uh, you know some good resistance levels uh, coming back on the downside. Uh, looking at the uh, overnight low, sixty-four seventy-five, kind of no no man's land. I mean, just you know potential double top in the market. I don't know, Dennis. This market just seems to shrug off everything and just keep going higher. That's our show for today. Have a great trading day. Have a great weekend. We'll get some Wells Fargo numbers up for you around 9 a.m. if you're trading it today. And we'll be back with you on Monday.